and welcome to your outlet for outdoors and Western lifestyle news, The Bend Show. You know, where we share the other parts of life with you, where you never know what's coming around The Bend. I'm your host, Rebecca Warner, aka Beck. And as always, you know, we love hearing from all of you, your comments, stories, ideas. You can get a hold of us anytime, call or text 305-900-2363. Again, that's 305 305- 900-2363. Or you can always drop us an email at bendradioshow at gmail.com. Sitting alongside Shotgun, as always, is my producer and co-host, Jeff Tigger Earhart. Now, him and I have been out and about. We've done some hiking, as well as visiting with some other folks. And curious, how is your fall looking where you are at? Where we're at, yes, the colors are changing. Leaves The acorns are dropping, walnuts are dropping in other areas, but have you found anything unusual when you've been out and about? Recently, what we have found and what others in our area up here in the north have come across is something unusual. A flower typically considered the first sign of spring has been spotted by quite a few of us. And let me know if you've had this show up where you're at as well. That flower is the crocus, the prairie crocus. It's a simple flower with velvet-like paper pale purple petals. And for many of us, I know this has always been kind of the first ever find in the fall because typically we find it in, you know, the spring. And Tigger, in your family, when you look at it in the spring, isn't that kind of a tradition where you might get a treat or something? I can't remember. I remember you telling me a story. When we were kids, my dad would say whoever was the first one to find the first crocus of the season would get a little prize. Ah. So when all of us kids were out in the field or we were doing something or we, we were in the pasture fixing fence, whatever the case may be, that we had to keep our eyes open for the first crocus of the season and whoever found it would get a little a little toy or something like that. It was just kind of a neat little game we would play. Oh, I love I love memories like that. That was my dad's way of getting us out and exploring oh, sure. our environment. It was a way of teaching us a little bit more about the plants and the flowers and that sort of thing. Great incentive. Always love hearing those stories. And so this question I'll throw out to all of you. Have you seen anything unusual in your neck of the woods? Are maybe the mushrooms blooming differently than usual? Are leaves maybe falling faster than usual? Uh, Here's another one. Our wildlife. Are you seeing the deer? Maybe they're starting to lose their velvet. Hey, did you see our neighbor, the, the deal he had on Facebook? No. Didn't you see that? The the paw prints that he had, and he put his hand next to it. Are you serious? Yeah, Dallas had that on <gasps> there. And he uh, just today it was on Facebook, and he said, what is this? So and if speculation. It, if, it was a, uh, if it was a mountain lion, that is an awfully big mountain lion that he found by his place. Oh, okay. I, I don't know. I need to jump back on Facebook and see what other people are saying. It I looks just... like cat prints, but that is a monster cat if that's the situation. All right. We're going to know more about that here in the coming weeks. We're going to have to investigate this because now I'm really excited. Our first news story is a positive one. The pheasant forecast. Upland bird hunting is a favorite sport for many of us. And as we near the opener for pheasant season, it is always the question, how is the pheasant population? Well, after a tough winter throughout the upper Midwest, it is being reported that pheasants survived and populated much better than expected, especially in those areas that had productive habitat, the pheasants flourished. The birds proved to be tough last winter and the relatively dry spring after the hard winter made for ideal nesting and brood survival. With this positive news, hunters get ready for pheasants to fly and be ready for a successful upland bird hunting season. Our next headline, grizzly bear attack. Earlier in September, while on a deer hunt, it turned quickly into a backcountry emergency when a man was mauled by a grizzly bear south of Big Sky, Montana, while helping track an archery deer down Rudy Norlander, 61, a Navy veteran, was in the Custer Gallatin National Forest following trails. He knows very well when the man encountered two grizzlies. Norlander first spotted the younger of the two grizzlies and was drawing his side firearm when what he described as a 10-foot mega grizzly 
pounced before the man could do anything. Norlander tried to shoot the bear. However, instead, his gun misfired. And as the grizzly was already on him, had no time to play dead. Instead, with adrenaline pumping, he punched the large bear in the nose. The grizzly continued, though, to attack the man, ripping off his lower jaw and part of his trachea scratching his chest open while biting at a bicep and leg. The man continued fighting through it all and screaming in which fellow members of the party heard the struggle. In fear they would hit the man while aiming for the bear, the fellow hunters threw rocks at the grizzly while calling for emergency responders. Thankfully, the actions worked. Norlander survived, however, now is healing from multiple major reconstruction surgeries. For example, his fibula from one leg has been used to reconstruct his jaw. This is a wild story of human survival, but one that needs to be shared, I think, and you would agree, Tigger, as anyone heading into the backcountry, hunting, hiking, or seeking just enjoyment, grizzly attacks have been on the rise. You got to know and understand what to do as well before heading into the wilderness. Check with local wildlife officials for recent sightings. That sounds like that movie. Uh, oh, with Leonardo the, DiCaprio. Yeah, Re- Revenant. Is that what it was? Re- oh. Something like that. The Revenant. Yes. That's what it was. Yes. It sounds exactly like that. Uh, like that movie. That's wild. So this guy is alive. He is alive. He's stable. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. He's going to have a long time to survive. Or Sorry, recover. His, sur- his recovery time is going to take, of course, quite some time. But, you know, you look at this story. He was somebody that was very familiar with with that area of Montana. I've hunted in that exact area where he was at. And they have said, I think in the last couple of months alone, there has been more grizzly sightings and actually a couple of other grizzly attacks. So as you're heading into the backcountry, a lot of us dream about heading into the wilderness, right? This is a key reminder of how scary it can be. The world is a big place. Mm-hmm. Well, and now you make me nervous when you say that's where you go elk hunting all the time. And I'm like, <laughs> hey, you got to take a bazooka with you or something like that. But no, I mean, it stands to reason to make sure people know where you're going. Uh, you hear more and more stories about that. of just the cra- And they're not freak stories anymore when you say, well, that was a freak accident. We're hearing more and more and more of these things, just like I mentioned my friend Dallas. I'm reading the comments right here and going back and forth. What is this thing that's there? So it seems like for some reason uh, the tides are changing this fall a little bit. I don't know why that is. Well, regardless, be safe and make sure you check in with those local wildlife officials and double check, especially when it comes to grizzlies, mountain lions, wolves, any of that. It's better to have that knowledge and for them to know that you are out in a certain area in case you have to send an SOS signal. Because a lot of these areas, that's the other thing folks don't realize is you do not have cell phone service. You have to remember to turn the satellite portion on on your phone or have another device you with can get you. those emergency beacons right yes. atlas tracks they sell those a lot we've had them on the show many times atlas and tracks they have those little beacons great, right great great product where yes you hit a button and immediately sends your exact coordinates to the officials where they can find you it's important stay aware And if there are other stories out there like this, we'd like to hear about them. And I mean, if there's one that you would like to share, we would certainly like to share it with everybody. So can you throw the phone number out again in your email in case somebody has said story that they would just be like, hey, uh, I've got a story I'd like to share with y'all. To chat with us, give us a call at 305-900-2363, or you can send an email to bendradioshow at gmail.com. I know we just hit you with a lot of different information right off the bat. Well, it's just going to continue and get even better as we keep rolling. Stay where you are. The Ben Show will be right back. Before you head to the next rodeo, a concert, maybe a gathering on or off the ranch, we head to Medora Boot and Western Wear. Tigger and Beck here for Medora Boot and Western Wear, latest Western fashion in boots, jackets, and hats. From durable ranch wear to keeping the horses in sturdy tack, visit MedoraBoot.com to order. Or better yet, plan to visit Medora, North Dakota and shop Medora Boot and Western Wear. Again, go to MedoraBoot.com. You can follow on Facebook and tell them Tigger and Beck sent you. 
You've waited, dreamt of a hunting adventure, and now have harvested that trophy of a lifetime. Keep the memory alive with a custom-designed mount preserved as a work of art. Check out our approved taxidermist, depending on your location. The award-winning Schneider Taxidermy is located in Helena, Montana. When hunting the Dakotas, JB's Wildlife Designs in Mandan, North Dakota. Then Shadron Creek Taxidermy in Nebraska. And for the Central USA, Little Rack Taxidermy in Macomb, Illinois. Reach out to The Ben Show and let us help you find the right taxidermist. The holidays are around the corner and finding that thoughtful gift is always the goal. We have the perfect idea for you. Meet author Rochelle Barrett, The Prairie Crocus. I welcome you to my world, a collection of poems, love notes, and essays about ranch life, motherhood, and life lessons from the prairie in my new book, Anthology, in 2024 Ranch Life Calendar. Order both today at prairie-crocus.com. Beautiful photos with words that speak to the heart and soul. prairie dash crocus.com turning thoughts into writings from the heart a perfect gift in time for the holidays Welcome back to your outlet for outdoors and western lifestyle I am your host Rebecca Warner aka back and my co-host joining alongside always is Jeff Tigger Earhart taking a moment to stop and smell the roses We have all heard that phrase from time to time. Tigger has been busy visiting here off air with one of our crew, Johnny Candle, who is a professional angler, sport fishing, public speaker, and fishing guide himself, located in Devil's Lake, North Dakota during the late spring and summer months, reeling in walleye to now on the road to Florida, where he guides, chasing after those red fish during the fall and winter months. Tigger, I'm going to jump off and let Johnny sit down with you for a moment to elaborate on some wisdom that i've been overhearing you two gentlemen discussing the story about stopping and if you that may be your only one chance to see something and i want you to kind of tell me the story about that again of of what that was about your 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 friend that you worked with from tracker because that one is just a neat story in and of itself yeah no problem uh very young man first boat sponsor i ever had was tracker marine and i met a gentleman through them his name was Vern nelson since passed away uh and missed the guy dearly a lot he was this regional sales rep for tracker boats so i did a lot of sports shows trade shows all that with Vern, and constantly gleaning knowledge because i'm hungry to learn uh our careers separated as we both changed jobs and companies we worked with Ended up working together again, and I had a new role now under Vern as a regional territory salesman. So I'm driving around calling on uh, marine dealerships to sell boats. And I would call Vern, or Vern would call me and talk about the day and how did it go and who'd you talk to. And I would make a statement, Vern, I drove by three or four boat dealers, and I wrote their names down and where I saw them so I can hit them up later. I didn't even know they existed out here. And here I am thinking I'm doing a great thing because I wrote it down. At least I'm smart enough to write it down. And Vern made a comment to me once about, you know, you might want to think about stopping at one of those places because you never know if you'll be that close to that spot again in your life. And that hit home with me not only in business as far as making a sales call, but in life, you drive by something that looks really cool on the side of the road that you've never seen before. And you drive by it and you go, man, I hope I get to see that again. Well, as chances are, you probably won't. Right. Right. And as life has gone, I've quit driving by those places. I see something cool. I hit the next intersection. I whip a Yui and I go back and I take 10 minutes to look at what I saw. Maybe it was a covered bridge. Maybe it was a creek or a stream. Maybe it was a, a roadside fruit stand or something like that. Maybe it was a, a county fair in a county that I've never been to in my life. And I end up staying all day. I don't know. But uh, you got to learn to slow down, pump the brakes a little bit, and take advantage of the moment in front of you instead of getting so caught up in getting somewhere on time. Or And I'm not saying be late on purpose, but 
man, the whole stop and smell the roses kind of thing that we were all told as a kid, it kind of hit home finally in life. And you did that. You said you were with your bride in Florida, and there was a citrus stand, and you and, and she said, why are you stopping? And you went, wait a minute, here's a citrus stand. That's not something I see every day. Yeah, exactly. I'm new to the Florida lifestyle, and I don't even know what citrus gets harvested at what times of the year, but I'm driving by, and literally at the end of a driveway in front of a house are a mom and a kid with boxes of oranges and a sign that says whatever kind of orange they are for sale. Uh, I've never had that kind of orange. I've definitely never bought an orange from somebody's crate on the side of a road. So I pulled in and bought a bunch and they were phenomenal. Next time I drove by, I bought even more. So uh, again, you never know what you're going to meet, what you're going to experience. Uh, not to be over dramatic, but you might meet a person that becomes a lifelong friend or business mentor or partner, or uh, you just never know. Uh, and it, it, again, you'll never be that close again in your life. So why not take advantage of the situation and, and stop and check it out for a little bit? You know, they always say that if you if you see a little kid and they have a lemonade stand, stop and do that. Stop and buy a lemonade and give them a dollar for the lemonade. Yeah, I, kind of funny you said that. I stopped at a little secondhand store here in uh, the town I live in, Devil's Lake, about two weeks ago, and they didn't have what I wanted to buy. I was looking for a bait fridge for my garage, and uh, they didn't have one, but there's two little girls there selling uh, cookies that they had just baked, and I think I bought $10 worth of cookies, and I didn't didn't really need the cookies, but I was a youngster once trying to make a go of a business all on my own, and I was a little older than 10, uh, but the point is the same, right? Me spending $10 with those two little girls. Uh, they could be the next Betty Crocker. You never know. You never know. You don't know, and uh, they're out there trying to hustle a few bucks, and they're not just asking for handouts. They're actually baking a product and, and selling it, and you know what? The cookies were pretty dang good, too. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny Candle, thank you so much for the time. Great to spend a little time with you. And I tell you what, Johnny will forget more about fishing than you and I could ever know in a lifetime. I mean, when it comes to fishing, the man knows what's going on. You can follow Johnny along on his adventures, either if they be in the north or if they be down in the Gulf. Just head to his website, johnnycandle.com. That's J-O-H-N-N-I-E, Candle. Dot com. Again, Johnny, thanks so much. Look forward to visiting with you more in the future. Now stick around. We've got a lot more of the Bend Radio Show, and it's coming up right after this. The hunt is planned. The guide is booked. The trip is blocked off in the calendar. But one huge detail remains, preserving that trophy, creating a memory that will last a lifetime. Little Rack Taxidermy has that fast, friendly service to fulfill your taxidermy in a timely, professional manner. Reach out to Heather with Little Rack Taxidermy through Facebook at Little Rack Taxidermy or send an email to heatherjoe23 at hotmail.com. Little Rack Taxidermy, bringing back the natural look. Shooting ducks, skinning bucks, I'm a hunting princess in a pickup truck. Are the Florida Keys calling your name? Have you dreamed of catching exotic mahi-mahi, red snapper, sailfish, grouper? Blue Water Girl Charters can fulfill your dreams of saltwater fishing excitement. Book today, full or half-day charters. Let Blue Water Girl Charters make your dreams a reality. Blue Water Girl Charters, follow on Facebook for booking and more information. Blue Water Girl Charters, catch dinner and memories. It has been quite a run on the Bend Radio Show. Now, here's an interesting question for y'all. Several listeners reached out and wanted to have more Western history and Western lifestyle on the show from time to time. So what do you think? What are your thoughts? Give us your input. Or are there topics that you want Beck to cover? What are your favorites? We want to hear from you. Our listeners are from all corners of the country, actually all corners of the globe for that matter. So weigh in and let us know. Bendradioshow at gmail.com or call and text us at 305-900-2363. Welcome back to your outlet for outdoors and Western lifestyle. I am your host, Rebecca Warner, a.k.a. Beck. Heather Crowey, owner of Little Rack Taxidermy, has called in directly from the field with this field report and tips for upcoming taxidermy work on your trophies as we all gear up for deer and other big game hunting. Hey, Beck, just thought I would call with a quick update here. Watching a couple bald eagles soar over. They've been 
catching some rabbits as we've been running them out of the fields here. So it's been an Indian summer. We're still in the mid 80s, um, pushing maybe a little bit closer to 90 here. We're still in the 60s at night. So definitely, like I said, an Indian summer. We still have quite the dove population here. They haven't been pushed out of the area with cooler temperatures. So that's been good for those that are still looking to get a couple. And of course, you know, squirrels, they're still in season. Leaves are starting to change. Acorns are starting to fall. And the October whitetail archery season opens up. Good luck to everybody that's going out there. And with that, just wanted to throw out as well a little bit of field care, a couple tips. If you're planning on having your animal mounted please do not drag your deer out backwards that is very very rough on the hair and can damage it it makes it pretty tough to make something look good again along with that is putting a rope around the neck that damages the hair as well if you can pull them out with the grain of the hair get them cool as soon as possible if you have any questions about caping out your deer always reach out to your taxidermist if you're not sure where to make your cuts. It's always better to leave too much hide than not enough hide. I'm going to post a couple of pictures on my Little Rack Taxidermy Facebook page so if anybody needs a photo reference, if you're a visual person like I am, hopefully those will be helpful to you. Here in the shop I've got the last of the white tail and mule deer mounted just doing up little bit of more finish work on them and wait for the last couple of customers to pick up their pieces thank you to everyone for a wonderful season I've got a couple different types of mounts to work on a couple special projects so while I'm chasing deer of a different color the green ones doing a little background research and whatnot on those so when things slow up here in the field I'll be able to get back into the swing of everything so like I said, just wanted to do a quick update here. I've got the combine rolling back up to empty out. We will catch you later. Have a good one, guys. Great insight again from Heather Crowey of Little Rack Taxidermy. Follow her on Facebook. We have all her information on the bendshow.com website, as well as if you are looking for a taxidermist in your area, let us help you preserve that trophy and make it a work of art. Our spotlight today is on Rochelle Barrett otherwise known as the Prairie Crocus. I have followed this author and photographer from Northern Montana for quite some time. Ranch life, motherhood, and life lessons from the prairie have inspired Rochelle Barrett to write poems, notes of love, and essays. She's sharing a world through another's eyes and bringing back into focus that all our trials, tribulations, and celebrations are part of our journey. While Rochelle Barrett has a way with words that speak to the heart, here, take a listen and see if this doesn't resonate with you. I recently heard a great quote from Matthew McConaughey. Forget happiness, go for joy. It got me thinking, what if we embrace joy instead of always searching for happiness? Happiness is treated like a final parking spot we all think we're going to get to one day and feel like we've arrived. But then what? If happiness is a destination, where do you go from there? But joy? Well, that's a feeling you have to consciously find in all things. You are challenged to find it every minute of every day. Joy can be tiny, like the fleeting scent of rain or the warmth of a towel from the dryer, or as big as the moment your newborn baby is laid on your chest or you finally say, I do, to the one you love. Joy is in the living, the being, the doing. It's your choice to have joy in all things or to spend eternity chasing happiness and missing out on all the good things in life. I pray that you go for joy today. Beautiful words that I think we all need to hear from time to time. The Prairie Crocus, Rochelle Barrett, we are happy to say has joined our crew. We look forward to hearing her words in the coming weeks. If you are already looking for that perfect gift for the upcoming holidays, she has her latest book out now, Anthology as well as a calendar two for 2024 on sale at prairie-crocus.com. Again, that's prairie-crocus.com. Be sure to follow her on Facebook too. We have all the links to find the Prairie Crocus on our website, thebenshow.com. And that is all for this week's show, folks. Thank you to my producer, sound engineer, co-host Jeff Tigger Earhart. 
To our guest this week, new to the crew, the Prairie Crocus, author and rancher Rochelle Barrett. Welcome aboard and thank you for the great thoughts shared by Johnny Candle, pro angler, fishing expert, public speaker and fishing guide, as well as to Heather Crowey of Little Iraq Taxidermy with a field update. The contact information for all these fine folks can easily be found on our website, The Ben Show, in this episode's show notes. And remember, folks, to keep sending in any questions you might have. Know of something spot worthy for us to share, as well as your area's field reports. That number you can call or text at any time is 305 900 2363. Again, that's 305 900 2363. Or you can email bendradioshow at gmail.com, as well as always tag us at the Ben Show on social media. We love hearing and seeing your life on or off the trail. If you missed part of this episode or want to hear past shows, you can find them all on the website, thebenshow.com. Be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcasting app and to the Ben Show YouTube channel. Looking to change things up at your next event, conference, or awards banquet? Have us, Tigger and Beck, entertain your crowd. We are PRCA Pro Rodeo card holders, where Tigger is also a pro rodeo announcer, and we are both PRCA music directors. From MCs to event headliners, public speakers to acting as a host couple, let us make your gathering extra special. From ranching, cattle, hunting, fishing, camping, and rodeo, plus so much more, let us spice up your next rodeo, fishing tournament, or event to be had. It will be one to be remembered, that's for sure. Thank you to our partners, Ditali Outdoors, The Prairie Crocus, Blue Water Girl Charters, Buckstorm, Little Rack Taxidermy, Mickey's Mustard, ToxicCalls.com, Wobble Creek Outfitters, Atlas Tracks, RFD TV, and Wrangler. Finally, a big thanks to all of you listeners out there that came along. And whether you're coming or going today, stay with us as we ranch it up. And remember to keep up with me back all week long by following The Bend on Facebook and on Instagram at The Bend Show. This is Rebecca Warner. Catch Beck if you can next week on The Bend. <music>